I'm cool to erase this? Okay. So now that we have this mathematical backing and we remember and or have learned what these things are, we can apply it to getting electron density maps and applying it to X-ray crystallography. The next thing we're going to talk about is the atomic scattering, excuse me, scattering factor, or the in, or it's sometimes called the atomic form factor. So we're going to pretend that we're looking at an atom in a unit cell. with fractional coordinates. What we mean by a fractional coordinate is you take wherever your displacement is divided by the lattice vector. So this is our fractional coordinate in the x direction. We're going to have wherever we are in the x, and we got to divide it by the x lattice vector. What symbol did we get to give the x lattice factor? A. A. Yep. So this is the fractional coordinates in the x direction. Does that make sense to people? Okay. So what would y be? We'll use b. What's this one? Y. y. Yep. And then uh, w. Z divided by what? Yes. You can show based upon phase shifts uh, that if you scatter off an atom, it can be shown at the phase shift, which we just talked about, of a wave scattered off of an atom is, we're going to use phi for right now as a symbol, 2 pi h u plus k v plus l w. I don't really want to derive that because it takes a little too much time. It's a lot of trig and you just end up at this result. I feel everyone could actually do it in the room. It just eats up time. Okay. 2 pi, we see that all the time. Comes from radians. We just introduced um, u, v, and w as our fractional coordinates. What the hell is this H, K, L? Yep, Miller planes. Uh, where H, K, L are Miller indices. That define the Bragg angle. meaning the spot of maximum intensity. The scattered wave can be described by If we're talking about a wave, what mathematical function do we need to use? Could use sine. Could use cosine. What's all inclusive and better? E to the i. Yep. A e to the i phi is how we're going to define it. Where a a is just some coefficient, and this is our wave. We have our full description of the wave. Now, right now, a we haven't determined what it is. We're going to give it a little symbol F 
sub n. This thing right here is known as the atomic form factor. We will define it in a minute, but it depends on whatever element we're hitting. And there's a big table with them that includes the atomic form factors for all the different elements that have been studied. But what else do we have to include in here? B, yep. And then if we expand that out more, we got I two pi times that monstrosity. H U plus K V plus L W. Okay. Where F of N. And notice I'm using n's because I tried to use i's at the beginning and then I got really confused on what was an imaginary i and what was my index. So I just switched to n's. Um, f of n is given by this function. Zero to infinity p of r. Actually, we'll do rho of R, K, R, K, R, R squared, D, R, where K is equal to 4 pi sine of theta over lambda. Okay, where does this thing come from? It is an awful pecan tui expression. Uh, this is a probability or an electron density distribution function. That's why it looks so pecan tui. This crap, do you know where it comes from? Uh, this part comes from Bragg's law. Right. Yep. So we're not using Cartesian coordinates. These are from spher coordinates. spherical polar coordinates. So this stuff falls out of spherical polar coordinates in integrating that. So you, instead of having to represent stuff with x, y, and z, you can represent them from a point in space, this angle, and this angle. What's up? K and R. I don't know. Right. Oh, K, K has to deal with what is this angle. So, so is K, K of R like a function? No. It's K times R. It's K times R. Yep. How no R is like how far away you are from the center of the sphere, and you're docking spheres. Take that for what it is right now. Okay. And what this atomic form factor, if you integrate it all the way, or you look at the density. At zero, you actually get the number of valence electrons. So F of n has a Gaussian shape. Changes based on atom. meaning it changes with the number of valence electrons. As you get closer to the, the center of that function, it is how many electrons does that atom or ion have? Um, but it is specific to each type of atom and or ion. So all you'd really need to do is just plug that value in here. 
to get how does that wave get scattered off. You do have to know this other bit, which we'll worry about later, and we'll show examples.